The first pro regarding this 2023 Integra A-Spec Tech model is gonna be this optional six-speed manual transmission. It has a nice heavy finish to that gear shifting knob. The clutch pedal is perfect. The clutch uptake, you know, it's not an ambiguous clutch point or anything like that. It's so predictable, it's easy to drive. You're never gonna miss any gear shifts in this. It's easy to rev match downshift, to heel toe, to do all of that stuff. You know, it's a proper manual like this that makes me love manuals, right? Now, one subtle con regarding the manual transmission, it's only available with the fully loaded A-Spec tech models like you see here. So they really want you to be serious about the manual. You know, if you want it, they're gonna make you pay up for it type of thing. The next pro, is the exterior looks. I love the way the Integra looks. I'm not gonna go into the name and the reason why it's not a two-door or any of that stuff. I don't really care. Yes, this car is based upon the Civic, but there's actual differences between this and the Civic. For instance, the chassis on this is actually better and a little bit stiffer, and the looks also show it. I mean, it looks amazing. I like the headlights, the taillights. This is also a hatchback, if you didn't know. So you have massive amounts of space in the trunk, and you can fold down the seats, and that's, this is definitely another pro. It's gonna be that practicality as well. I mean, there's just gobs of space in here, literally SUV levels of space. And that's one of the main reasons why I like this vehicle, but it does it in a way where it doesn't look juvenile or delinquent. This is an Acura, it's a luxury product. Sure, that might be a vain thing to say, but regardless, it's the truth. Most people really think you're doing something when you pull up in an Acura versus like a Honda Civic if that makes sense. You know, I don't think that's a difficult thing to understand. And the overall shape of this, you know, even though it's a hatchback, it doesn't look like a traditional hatch. It's kind of has like that coupe-like sloped appearance to it. Now that actually has some pros and cons with it as well. Sure, it looks amazing, but I will say one of the cons with that is in the rear for taller passengers, it's a little bit difficult to get in and out of this vehicle. They have to really kind of duck their head because of that slope rear roof line. And also there's limited headroom in the back as well. I mean, I'm only five foot 11 and even I'm kind of rubbing my head against that roof there. So that's something you have to keep in mind. But overall, I would consider this interior space to be a pro. In the front seats, at least, you can be massive and fit in here. I mean, there's so much adjustability with these seats in the front. You can be like nearly eight feet tall, I feel like, and fit in the front. So that's brilliant. And the Civic was a lot like that as well. And yes, this interior space is adopted from the Civic, but it has its own little subtle enhancements, of course. But the infotainment, the climate control knobs, all that is lifted out of a Civic, but that's not necessarily a bad thing. They really improved and made the Civic a higher quality interior space. So all the buttons, the knobs, the switches, they all have a nice clicking, tactile sensation to it and I really appreciate it. The seats are super comfortable and of high quality, but I will say these suede A-spec seats, it's a little bit difficult to clean. I've noticed that hair and various particles kind of get stuck onto the seat almost like a magnet, but regardless, they look amazing. They're supportive and they're comfortable and I appreciate it for those reasons. Let's move away from the interior for a moment and let's talk about other aspects. Another huge pro about this Integra, for me anyway, is gonna be the fuel economy in the real world. I mean, this is the manual version. I've been thrashing on this for the past week that I've been testing it for you guys. And this vehicle is rated to get around 26 MPG in the city, but I've been getting 26 while thrashing on it. So you can imagine just how fuel efficient this car would be if you were more mellow with it and you drove it more casually, or better yet, if you got the optional CVT transmission, which is the automatic uh, that this car has to offer. That's rated to get like 30 MPG in the city, and you can absolutely beat all of these MPG numbers. That's one of the biggest pros. I mean, this vehicle can get nearly hybrid levels of fuel economy if you're more mellow with it. That is so impressive. I love that about this vehicle. And no, I don't consider the CVT to be a bad thing. I haven't tried it in the Integra, but in the Civic and the HRV Honda that I tried, the CVT was set up to be just fine. And in the Integra, they were saying that it was tuned to mimic a regular automatic transmission and it was tuned to get rid of that rubber banding effect. So I think it should be a great option for most people. Plus this engine that we have here, it's the same engine out of the Civic SI. So it's that performance 1.5 liter turbocharged four cylinder engine pushing out 200 horsepower, 192 pounds feet of torque. The Civic SI only comes as a manual transmission, but here you can get this engine and get it with that CVT if you don't know how to drive a manual 
transmission vehicle. So I think that's another pro. And overall, despite this car being a turbocharged engine, I think this engine is a pro overall. It's very effortless for everyday driving because of that turbocharger, you have all that low end grunt. Plus it doesn't sound terrible. Acura worked on the exhaust to give it an additional growl. It doesn't drone or anything. It's not obnoxious. It's just a subtle noise that you get and it sounds decent. You know, for a turbo four cylinder, it's not terrible. Obviously it's not as good as a naturally aspirated engines, but this is not bad. I'm pretty satisfied with this engine for the most part, especially with the power and the fuel economy. Now I'm gonna label this as a con. This vehicle does produce a little bit more wind noise and road noise and part Partly that's because this vehicle does not utilize double pane glass, but it's not obnoxious. Even though something like a Mazda 3 is quieter than this Acura, I still don't think that the subtle wind noise or the tire noise takes anything away from this Integra because it's not annoying. The vehicle lets in the correct amount of noise to the point where the vehicle feels like it's communicating with you, okay? So it doesn't feel completely dull. And because of that, you feel like you're going faster than what you really are. And I think that's a cool sensation. I know it's like a weird thing to defend, but it kind of adds to the fun factor of driving this car. But to some that could be a pro, to others that could be a con. The additional noise doesn't take anything away from this vehicle for me anyway, regarding its daily drivability. The ride quality in this, I would say it's not a pro or a con. It's tuned to be a little bit on the stiffer side, of course. That's what enables this car to drive so well. But once again, it doesn't beat you up or anything. So it's not a cloud, but it strikes a perfect balance for me in terms of handling and ride comfort as well. This is what the 18 inch wheels. With the base model, you can get 17 inch wheels and that should help the ride quality a little bit more. The adaptive dampers that you get with the A-Spec tech models do absolutely nothing. Sport mode, comfort mode, they both feel identical in terms of ride quality. So that's not really something I care about. Now, one of the other biggest pros regarding this Integra, it's going to be this ELS Studio 3D sound system, the 16 speaker, 530 watt unit. This sounds absolutely incredible. Really, it's this audio system and this manual transmission that makes this vehicle hit way above its weight class. It makes this car so satisfactory to own and live with. I mean, this audio system, it's got amazing clarity. It's got bass. It's got just everything that you need out of an audio system, but it's only available with the A-Spec tech models. And I have two more pros I want to share with you, the safety of it and the value proposition of it. So first I'm going to talk about the safety. This is a IIHS Top Safety Pick Plus. Same thing with the Civic, of course, and all the safety features on here, it's all pretty much standard. You know, even things like blind spot monitoring, rear cross traffic alert, and all the safety features work extremely well with these Honda Acura products. That's another thing I really like. And finally, I said value proposition. Many quote unquote enthusiasts claim that, oh, this is just like an overpriced Civic, but that's only a one-sided way of looking at it. Sure, this is like seven to $8,000 more expensive than a Civic Si, especially fully loaded like you see here. However, that's just when you look at it from a MSRP perspective. One of the things I really like about these new Acuras is they actually lease out extremely well. It's very affordable to lease many of these new Acuras primarily because the interest rate on a Acura lease is pretty low. It's like 3%. And if you do a one pay lease, it's like 1% interest rate. So that makes this car very obtainable, fully loaded like you see here. If you did a one pay lease and you qualified for the Acura loyalty credit of $1,000 and you got this car for like 5% off MSRP, which some brokers are offering, the effective monthly payment is like $420 a month. That makes this car so obtainable and affordable, way cheaper than if you were to just simply finance uh, a Civic Si, right? And if you like the car so much, you can just buy the car out at the end of the lease and you'll have all this equity in the vehicle. So I wish more enthusiasts would be educated on the topic of buying and selling cars. I feel like that's something that most enthusiasts should be more involved with, not just, you know, being upset about frivolous things like, you know, Acura calling this an Integra, you know? But regardless, I talked more about that in my full review of the Integra. So if you want to watch that, I will have it on the end screen here. Check it out and I will see you there.